Well, welcome to I, my studio. Thank you. This is mind blowing. <laughs> um, yeah, I you know I, I grew up in South Carolina and um, luckily got into skateboarding in '84, and then found a small but very dedicated group of people who were into punk and hardcore. Um, and so I think it was '85 that I discovered the the crew. Um, punk rock was sort of this this uh, this way this escape from conservative South Carolina culture, but also um, I felt like. You know, the anger was great in a lot of the punk rock because it was a way to say, I'm not okay with the way a lot of things are. Yeah. But then what I was looking for, one, as a way to sort of sell my devotion to punk rock to my parents, but two, just for my own personal philosophy, was looking for music that had really constructive lyrics. And so w the crew, right away, it's, it's fast, it's aggressive, but it's also got really positive lyrics. I mean, now, it, you know, the new generation would say, these are woke lyrics. These are super <laughs> woke lyrics. And, um, you know, questioning sexism, questioning racism, mm -hmm. questioning, um, you know, tribalism. Uh, it's all, you know, unity is a big theme. But, you know, see, listening to this and then seeing this, the thing about punk rock to me was that, okay, uh, it feels like me and my friends could be part of this scene. This isn't about virtuosity. It's about it's about passion and creativity and resourcefulness. Yeah. But um, but you know this this cover immediately conveyed multiple things to me. It conveyed that um, unlike most rock stars, people in punk and hardcore are you know the the crowd and the band are 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 unified in a way. And then the the kind of uh, black and white with spot color feel, felt very utilitarian, yeah. very DIY. Um, this is sort of, uh, you know, utilization of, of, of kind of a, an industrial or military style, but for something that really was the opposite of that. I, you know, I, I, I love, um, you know, I love propaganda art, yet I'm, I'm trying to get people to question right. propaganda. Yeah, so these sort yeah, of yeah. dichotomies and then, and you know, and this, and then this having a little bit of a, of a graffiti feel to it. I mean, immediately I just love this cover and I loved that the photo was a little bit, you know, uh, grainy and abstract because that allows it to feel like it, it could be an archetype for a scene rather than just specifically mm -hmm. about like these rock stars. And, and all of that was my, was stuff I was processing intuitively, whether that was the intention of the creation. So you yeah. tell me what was, you know, what, what was, what was going on at the time? Um, well, my, my then girlfriend, Michelle actually took that foot and it was a five by seven. She printed it out as a five by seven and gave it to me. And I just loved it because it was, we didn't have an idea what we were going to use for the cover. Initially, we were going to, I think we even wanted to ask Pusset if he would do something. But I was terrified of the, I didn't want him to do the skulls and the rotting flesh. I was, and right. I jokingly said, you know, just do, do something upbeat and fun. And, and, you know, it was kind of a joke. But then I kept looking at the photo and I just thought it really kind of represented at the time, especially what we were trying to put across, which was, I mean, we were really inspired by, Sham 69 was a big deal for us because we were hearing about how they were, they, it was like a band that loved the kids. They cared about the kids, you know, and right. they, they had the kids that sang along and they, the kids could, it was their stage too. And Jimmy Percy was like, you know, it's your stage. And I just, I was, I was terribly touched by that. I just loved the idea of it. And, and um, you know, I grew up, listening, I mean, my favorite bands were the Pistols and, and all of the original great bands, but um, there wasn't, it was like the Clash had a, a, a message. The Clash were kind of, they, they weren't just saying everything's shitty. And they also kind of told stories and songs. And I, I related to that way more than I related to, you know, the crazy Nihil. You know, I loved that stuff, but it, there was something about the class. So that, it, it was kind of like we wanted something that looked like what we sound, <laughs> what I thought we sounded like, if that makes any sense. And it was funny because initially my influence with any art that I do now was all from when I used to do zines. I was, I, we didn't have, we, we would go down to a Safeway up the street and for a dime, a copy, we would we could only do single-sided stuff, and then it would just take forever, and I'd staple pages together. But I learned how to, I just like to cut things out, and I like to put things together, and the contrast thing was a big thing because I knew nothing about how to separate photos. I right. knew nothing about the half-tone stuff, so 
it just was really inspired by the kind of the fanzine stuff that we, me and my brother and sister were doing when we were kids. And uh, that just, I, to this day, I still like to do stuff that looks like that. You know, it's like, I mean, it's, you know, if I land something out and. I love that aesthetic. I mean, the, the, <laughs> The idea that your your limitations become an asset instead of a liability is something that I've embraced in yeah. all of my art, and that that almost exclusively comes from punk rock. Yeah, um, for sure. You know, a little bit from from some of the skateboard graphics, and yeah. you know, the way that punk rock and skateboarding were were, were married in the eighties yeah. to a degree. But but yeah, the um, you know, necessity is the mother of invention, and and I uh, but then. Also, when something like that gets established within a scene, that when somebody sees it, what it instantly conveys is is this, you know, belief in, um, you know, outsider resourcefulness, and yeah. so so then the way that um, aesthetics that were out of necessity become part of a philosophy is really fascinating yeah, to me sure, too. Sure. I st you know, even now that yeah, I have computers and I, I got more money to do stuff with, I still tend to lean on the the stuff that's fun and easier. I, don't, I never wanted art to be hard, you know. I always I wanted it to be. I, it, did, it wasn't hard for me to do draw and paint stuff, but I, I sort of started to learn from various friends. Like they they were just tortured by what they were doing, and I was just like, it's just it's too much work. I'm just too lazy of a of a of, in terms of creating stuff. I don't want to have to put that much thought and effort into it. Effort, but just not thought. I don't want to think too much about it. Well, the, I, I mean, I, I believe that a lot of times um, li limitations yield better results, that you, mm. you restrict the number of variables. And, yeah. you, know, I, uh, you know, I've worked with a, with a limited color palette my whole career, yeah. um, first out of economic necessity. Right. And then because it, it helped me to always hone in on the critical essence of what I was doing. And I think that there's a lot of that in punk rock, that yeah. this, uh, this, in, this intuitive embrace of that that's really powerful. But I use red uh, and black and white in a lot of my work because um, I think they're the most attention-grabbing sure. colors. Yeah. Um, but so, you know, this first version of the crew used the red, black, and white, and then there's the the song Red and Black yeah. on the record, but then then it switched over to the blue. And my first encounter with the record, because I got it a year after it came out, was with the blue version. Mm -hmm. Yeah, but, a lot of people I think got yeah, that. Yeah, I mean, tell the, the you know, sort of how uh, how that went. Came that out. was a BYO decision, and I, and I, quite frankly, was not into it. I, I also was just, um, we, were, I, we were talking earlier, but the way that the, you know, the back cover, I wanted to kind of design everything, but I, did, I, I also knew that they had, a computer, they had ways of doing it, make it more professional. I think that, that that was kind of what they wanted to do. So I sort of said, all right, compromise, you do, you know. But yeah, I, 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 I like, um, I never, I, I just never thought that the color, I, I just didn't think the color needed to change. I didn't understand. I wasn't, I was never really a big collector growing up. I had my records that I loved, but I, when I started to hear people say, you know, yeah, I've got the yellow and the blue and then it just, it, it, it pissed me off more than it made me think it was a, a a thing that spoke highly of their love for the band. And I just thought, it doesn't need a, why do you have to change color? <laughs> just leave it as it is, you know? I will say though, that this was a funny thing and I just remembered. So I had a stencil that I would use for all of our flyers and stuff. And it was always, see how the, the difference in the font? The S, yeah. I, I lost, somehow I lost the original stencil I had and I had to get another one. And the S's always bugged me on this because they were a little, they were slightly different. They were a little fancier than I wanted. Right. And I remember I had that and I had talked to Mark Stern and they said, well, can you change it? And he's like, yeah, I can do it. And he didn't change it. So I was like, damn it. You didn't even get that right yourself. <laughs> but yeah, I mean, I love it. And I, I you know, I, for, for me, there was just th that show that this was taken at was a, an enormous show at the Olympic Auditorium in LA. It was like thousands of people. And um, it was just chaos. And it was the first time that we really felt like we kind of made a dent in LA, you know, like we yeah. played a bunch of club shows and we were doing well, but that was like a huge show for us. And uh, the crowd just went, you know, they, the crowd took over this, there's video footage, flip side video footage of that. And it's just like, you can barely see the band. And I was like, that's what it's about, man. That's what it's about. But that's not the, the, the live stuff is from Fenders, right? So that's not the same. The recording is yeah, from yeah, Fenders. Yeah, yeah, yeah. 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 Um, yeah. And, that, and yeah, this was just a, our first big, the first time we ever played in front of that many people and uh, we came down and played with UK Subs yeah. and TSOL and a bunch of bands. That must have been exhilarating. Yeah, yeah. It was also the first time we ever played the song 99 Red Balloons and we, we debated because we thought, 
they're gonna kill us. They're gonna, that song is like a pop song and they're just gonna hate it so much. And we almost didn't do it. And then we went into it. We barely knew the song. We had practiced it a couple times and we, we went into it and the crowd just went nuts. And, so we sat, and I'm like, wow, all right. <laughs> so, I, you know, it, it is what it is. But um, I, just, I just think we also, I never had a tough guy voice. I was never a tough guy, but I never had a good growly voice. You know, I tried, I wanted to, but I just, it, was, it always, it was a little higher and a little sort of wimpier. And so I think I just, I tried to embrace and get good with, with what I had, you know, and the melodies, it's important to me. I was, yeah. it was a big, melody's big. I like, I like to be able to sing it, have a hook, and I still, I still like writing a hooky chorus, and I, it's just always something, I've, it's meant something to me, you know. Yeah, I mean, I, I, I had to look at the lyric sheet to get a lot of the lyrics. Right, yeah, yeah, know. me too. Um, and uh, I, I was, it's pretty impressive that, yeah, you know, you're cramming a lot of content in each song that you could actually like remember all those lyrics for every time you play. You had a few um, moments where it was like a little tough. You know, sometimes later on in years, people would say, do you still do blah, blah, blah? I was like, yeah, let me look up on the internet and make sure I have that first, the first line down. It's been a while since we've done that song. <laughs> but yeah, and I, you know, I don't know why it was important to try to do that. I think, I think it just had this, there, there was a sense of urgency and at, at that time, oh, you know, you know, Reagan and, you know, the 80s were just so, I, I really dis, I really detested the 80s. I, a lot of my friends were like, weren't the 80s great? And I'm like, fuck no, you know, there were some great movies maybe. And, but it was a tough, it was tough to be young. It was a bummer to be young in, in my world. And I just didn't enjoy it. And I, I, it was really, a, there was a sense of urgency. And I think that all came out naturally in the way that we, you know, we, we try to put out their, the message. So maybe you can't understand what I'm saying, but it, it, you know, I felt that the, 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 the effort was, the energy was important in the way that- Well, we, you know, with a, a, a song like Not Just Boys Fun, uh, you get the gist of the song just with the hook, you know? Yeah, so, yeah. <laughs> um, I mean, that was, that was something that, our, all teenage boys are insecure and want to act like, they're, you know, um, they aren't totally crushed when a girl gives them a sideways look. <laughs> right. But, you know, to, to actually come out and say, like, that's unhealthy <laughs> in a song, that was really progressive. And, uh, and, and soul the soul line, too, you know, like, uh, sure, you know, there was Bad Brains, who we all loved, but the, but, but I just, you know, wasn't thinking about how, there was a major lack of diversity and, yeah, you know, and, and, yeah. and punk and hardcore so that you're, you know, you're, you're addressing racism and colorblind, which I, I wanted to ask you why the English spelling? I don't know. I don't know. Oh, that's yeah. Cause uh, I don't know. I just, I, I just, that's how I spell color. I don't know. I don't, what do you mean? Like yeah. as opposed to the, the C O L O R. I mean, yeah, because the English spelling is C-O-L-O-U-R. Oh, so that would have been, that might have been a uh, Stern, the Canadian Mark, Mark Stern. It, 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 you mean in terms of how it was spelled out? Yeah, yeah. yeah. I don't know if I even knew that it was spelled out like that. Is it? Color, C-O-U-R. Oh, funny. I don't know that I ever really funny, realized you know, that. I mean, it's something that I noticed way, way back. That's funny. That's a, yeah. That might be the Canadian influence of the, the Sterns. Because Mark Stern did all of the types. Oh, ah, that's right. funny. Now, right. You know, I never knew that. Thanks for So, yeah, your, your original lyrics probably were the American spelling, right? But, yeah, uh, yeah. But I, you know, I just wasn't sure whether maybe there was a little bit of a, um, you, you said you were a Sham 69 fan. Yeah, like, yeah. And not, like the English way of doing things is just cooler. <laughs> Um, well, my next interview I do with somebody, I'm going to say, yeah, we had that sort of, view. no, that's funny. I had to think what you were asking because I was like, yeah, cult, what do you mean? And it's like, I never, I don't think I ever paid attention to that, which yeah. might not be such a smart thing. Yeah. I don't know. You know, it, it just, uh, I always thought it was like, we weren't exactly coming from the suburbs, but I thought it had, it kind of was like speaking out of the suburbs, this more of a suburban American thing where it's just everybody around me was just like, every, it was so easy to just use derogatory terms and, and use stereotypes. And I didn't feel, it was weird being a young person and, and just accepting the, just the norms of, of, oh, it's a coming of age. This is how you are. This is how, you know, what it means to be a man, you know, act like a dickhead and treat women with, you know, like shit. And, you know, most of the people in my life that were important to me were women. And, you know, I grew up with a, a mother that was very strong and independent and encouraged, you know, she, 
I, when Martin Luther King was assassinated, you know, she, uh, there was a issue, we had dinner with her father, my grandfather, and he was very racist and said some words and, you know, she said, we're leaving and didn't, she didn't even speak to her own father for years and years and years because of this. And it, that really had an impact on me, you know, that she was willing to cut ties with her own dad, our grandfather, just because he just was such a bigot. The lyrics to all these songs are great, but, uh, you know, I especially, I mean, I love, I love the crew. I love, um, <laughs> Young till I die. Um, I mean, the the I had this feeling when I was a teenager that growing, going into your twenties meant that you were going to have to compromise your idealism, and I, and I was like really thinking, okay, I've got I've got a few years to sort of have the freedom to do things that are more adult without the same, uh, you know, just soul crushing responsibilities that yeah. adults have, but then that that song I was like oh yeah well that's just that's a that's an attitude that's a, uh, a you know a, an idealistic mentality that I could keep even after I'm having to navigate oh, all this yeah. other stuff yeah. so it, I really I really connected with that with that track too um, and that's a funny thing too because if I say on social media if I post something where I'm talking about you know uh, you know man I'm getting old blah, 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 you know there's always somebody that wants to just nail me right to that song. Well, but what about young till it is? Like, do you understand that like I was 20, so, you know, as a kid when I wrote it, first of all, and the, it's not about just being a young dipshit. It's about what's in your heart and not yeah, going old yeah. just before you're old. You know, that kind of thing. There was always my, I, it, a lot of it was had to do with the fact that I, you know, when I was starting to work real jobs in Reno and working in casinos and working with these people that were like my age and, you know, a little older, and they all seemed like they were 40 years old because they were just beaten already. They were just like, I get a, I got my weekly paycheck. I drink all, you know, it's just, it just seems devastating to me. And I just said, I can't let this, I can't, this can't be it. You know, there's got to be more life than this, you know? Well, yeah, I mean, I, I, I got it as just like young till I die means that you're not going to, you, you're not going to say I, uh, the world's defeated me. I'm, I'm yeah. a. I'm more of a spectator than a participant. Now. Exactly. That's it. That's it. And keep making your own fun and, and yeah. make your own way if you can. If you don't want to, that's fine. You know, I think good band logos are crucial to a band's success. If you look at <laughs> the Black Flag Bars or the Misfits sure. Fiend Skull um, or the DK. But that seven seconds, you know, O with the, with the seven and the crosshairs. <laughs> That was an easy to draw logo. I drew that on my Chuck Taylors, on my jeans, on, yeah. the on my skateboard. <laughs> so that was your that was your creation, right? Pretty much, yeah. We were trying to. I love logos, and 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 I love to draw logos of of bands. I used to draw like some of my favorite hard rock bands. I'd try to mimic their logos, and I, I just I was always doing that kind of stuff. And and I just wanted us to have something that I like. One, I, I like the idea of one symbol. I'm not sure what band. I guess it was DOA had the they had a little. They had a little guy with a, what was their thing? Well, it was probably Black Flag Bars were the first really influential one. But yeah, I love the idea of that. And I, I just thought it was cool that, you know, sometimes now you'll see all the logos on one page and it just looks like a, it just, it, I was way, way more than I was into like professional teams, sporting teams. I like logos. I was always like drawing, even if I didn't like the sport, I would draw the logos. And I don't know, I don't know what that was about. But yeah, yeah, that's, that was kind of a big thing that we, we wanted to try to create our own, our own thing, I guess. Yeah, well, that was a really genius thing because I think that anything that's easy for for high school students to redraw themselves, sure. that's uh, yeah, it's like it's like the secret handshake. <laughs> yeah, right. <laughs> well, we tried to make we had this little I don't know where he's at. This little guy we call him Ruben. We tried to make that a, a, a thing that we put on all of our records and. The, it, kids will draw it and it's just so completely different like they, right. it, there's nothing even you know and I always thought that was funny I was like that's the easiest thing to draw I can draw that in like a s matter of seconds you know because I did it so much but yeah it's really simple and you'd, people would go like check this out and it'd be like the eyes are all wonky and it's so I was like that's not a good logo we can't use that kids aren't going to draw that on their on their shirts cool Ooh.